Okay, so people are still coming in, but we're going to start um, this off today. So thank you everyone for um, showing up. Thank you everyone for coming. I can see people are still coming in, which is fantastic. Um, super, super exciting webinar for anyone that's been following the previous webinars, all being great. Uh, but today we have a super uh, special guest, uh, the legendary Philip Shopman, who is a complete legend in the game. He's here to teach us all about UGCs, what to do, how to do, where to even get started, right? It's a very complex uh, world. So he's going to be um, teaching us all in all about that. At the end, you'll also have a Q&A, as always, where you'll be able to ask Philip and me questions directly um, to really help level the game. Um, so yeah, without uh, waiting any longer, let's jump into it and get started. So I'm going to take five minutes of Philip time, Philip's time just because I want to show you guys how crucial it is to be talking about UGCs and how crucial it is to understand why it's so important in today's uh, performance marketing world and for building a brand, right? So it kind of comes together, the nice mixture of using that organic content with the um, paid content as well to really make the most of it. Um, so yeah, let's jump into it. So. Today's topic, UGC ads, the holy grail of marketing. So what are we going to discuss? We're going to show a little bit about the data. Uh, we're going to talk first about reels, right? Because that's where Meta usually focuses the UGC content and why that's so pumping up. And that's mostly because of the UGCs and we'll see that as well. Um, how to find inspiration. And then I'll just pass the mark over to Philip because he's much more interested than me anyway, right? So we'll really make sure he maximizes that. Fantastic. So before we jump into the data, I want to just say we need to think a little bit differently about reels, right? It's not the same as we used to think. It's not the same as the old school marketing, as the banners, all the stuff we're used to doing. It's a bit different. And the way I like to look at it is like this. On one end, you have entertainment. And if you think of entertainment, we think of usually movies, stuff like that. On the other hand, we have social network, which is friends and family, right? That's the meta platforms. That's the, that's where we want to actually go ahead and put our audience out there, right? Speak to us, put wedding pictures, show the last family vacation. That's where we're going to check up on what's happening. Now, this side is Netflix. We know that, right? I want entertainment. I'm going to Netflix. This side is Facebook and Instagram, right? I want to see my friend's surfing trip. I go, I see his story. That's where it is. Now, the real beauty here of what's happening with UGC and Reels is there's something in the middle here. And here we have Miley Cyrus then in the best of both worlds because that's what it is, right? We take the entertainment part and we take the friends and family and we combine that. So people will initially come for the friends and family, but we see it in the in the Facebook's reports, in the last Q4 reports of Facebook release and Q1, we saw an upwards of 24% in usage because people came over here and then they ended up staying at the reels. And when people go into reels, they're not looking at people they know anymore. And that's how you make this transaction from the content to uh, the friends and family, uh, from the friends and family to the content, right? And that's the nice beauty that happens over there. Um, so let's understand why we're talking about this now that we understand how to think about it. If we look at the data, the first thing we need to see is it's still very, very not competitive compared to the market. For conversion campaigns, CPM for reels are 53% cheaper on average than the rest of the placements, meaning there's still a massive market here that's waiting to explode. And the reason this hasn't exploded yet is because most people don't know how to generate content that is good for reels, right? Because there's a different language we need to speak when we talk in reels compared to when we speak Facebook feed. And that's what people are still missing in today's uh, um, industry. If we look at the big brands, the ones that are making tons of money from e-com, that's what they do now. They're focusing on these types of content. Now, if we look at performance, this is the average return on ad spend for reels per month. And we, well, I want you guys to see this positive momentum. And that's the main thing to focus on. Now, what's really interesting to see is this is Q4. We would expect this to actually be higher, but we can actually see that reels are still growing in this momentum. And the reason for this is because it's still so uncompetitive. There's still massive advantage here to go ahead and jump start. So I think that's the main thing to really focus on and see over here. And that's why I think it's a massive, massive opportunity. As we can see, 45% growth in performance, 
right? In return on ad spend in the last six months, while spend has also gone up, right? So if we look at the actual spend as well, spend has gone up and performance has gone up. So we would expect it to be opposite, right? We reach this capacity and then, and then return on ad spend will go down, right? Diminishing rule of return. So we can actually see that we're not there yet. There's still massive opportunity to grow before we will see this, this dump in performance. And that's exactly where uh, I think there's a massive, massive uh, opportunity here uh, to really jump into the market. And that's what was really important for us in Magix to speak to Philip because he's probably the master in creating content, right? He's done this for over 20 years and he's moved with the industries to really see this. So that's where we really wanted to get. Now, a lot of the issues people are facing is they don't know how to create content, don't have the inspiration, right? And that's what, for example, also Magix is hoping with that as well, to really help you guys get inspiration a bit. So you'll have an inspiration tool where you can actually search for specific brands or whatever it may be. And that's what's really cool about this. And this will be AR based. Why will be what I'm saying AR based? Because if I want to search for reels with Nike shoes, I can search Nike shoes and then I can find my competitors. I can see what's happening in the market. I can get the inspiration. Then I can go to my content creator and say, look, this is what's working. This is the trends that are currently happening. I want one, two, three. Right. So that's how we help you guys complete that cycle as well. So that's it for me. I've already taken too much time uh, um, from Philip, so I'm going to pass the mic on to Philip. Philip will be able to um, share all his insights and take it away from now. And I remind you guys, uh, if you have any questions, pop them in the chat. We'll do the Q&A at the end uh, with our panelists um, um, posting that as well. So be sure to stay for that. And yeah, Philip, the mic is yours. Thank you so much. That was a fantastic introduction. Uh, thank you, Danny. Hello, everybody. Uh, Danny, can uh, the people actually uh, chat here and um, I can have a little bit of feedback if I ask them to put something in the chat? Is that possible or, or not for this time? In the q and I'm not for sure. They can uh, pop us up in the Q&A. Uh, and in the chat, I think we can make that happen as well. Yeah. You can? Okay, perfect. All right. Thank you very much. Cool. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. All right, perfect. Well then, um, super happy to be here. Thank you very much, uh, Danny, for that introduction. Thanks for Magix for bringing me on, and thank you to everybody who has joined here for our webinar UGCs. That's what we're going to talk about. But I want to frame it in the right way because actually, I believe I got about twenty nine point five minutes now after checking in here to really change your business right and with your business maybe even your entire life forever at least that's my mission i don't do anything um with a smaller picture in mind right i mean i think we shouldn't spend any time at all with anything if we don't believe this is going to generate the highest impact possible and so let's jump right into it i think i have over 60 slides um i'm not sure if i can do that in 29.5 minutes but let's try so people say that this what i gotta share with you is the most powerful secret for maximizing your ad profits is it a secret really not sure if it is to you it was to me for quite a long time and i've been in this for 20 years so uh bear with me i think uh it's really really cool what we're gonna do here now right so I think you can chat now, right? Can we chat? So if 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 you can put your comments into the chat, uh, let me know. I'll try to pull this up here as well. I want to know if you're ready. Let me let me know in the chat your favorite emoji. Yes, uh, you want to get you engaged. You want to have a little uh, spirit check in here. And most importantly, I want to make sure that you consider this here a masterclass kind of format, right? Webinar can mean a lot of things. Uh, I don't want this to be only me talking. We're going to have a Q&A at the end, and I want you to get the most out of this and actually work with me through that, all right? So let's go. Bruno, let's go. Nick says ready. Andrew is hands up. Perfect. Hell yeah, that's the right spirit. Okay, cool. What is that? That's a weird emoji. Okay, I hope that's a good one. All right, let's go. Um, So I'll put this down here, and we dive right into it. So since you're ready, uh, let me start with this here, because 
this is how I really got started with UGCs, right? And and, and that kind of space. Um, this is, um, mind you, a chart that is a little bit older. Why is that? Why don't I give you like the actual data? Because we're going to speak about it in a bit. But I want to show you that even like two, three, four years ago, people were already looking at what is actually driving purchasing decisions. Well, obviously, we've been looking at this for hundreds of years or maybe thousands, right? Uh, but we're in a very different space and time now. So if you look at this data from 2017 to 19, you already see a major trend. And I want you to look at the very bottom of it all, right? Look at how much celebrities and influencer content back then, 17 and 19, influenced purchase, purchasing decisions, right? Back then I thought, wow, I have to get like the big influencers and that's gonna make a difference. Well, it does, but actually, not that much. At least that's what the data says. I'm sure there's outliers. Of course there are. If you look at professional brand images, the kind of stuff that we typically run for our business, right? We know that it can be hard, right? So you see the percentages here. And then you look at cons uh, consumer created content, right? So UGCs, and it's a totally different thing. And also look at the trend, right? It's nuts. And that was before we entered into really a new time and space really because what we're going to see today is actually probably the most powerful shift in media history that we've ever seen and i've been in the business for 20 years i certainly have never seen something like this but it has been going on for a lot longer it's what a lot of people call the tick tockification right so it definitely started on TikTok two, three, something like that years ago when it spread to the meta platforms like Instagram and Facebook. The YouTube logo is actually missing here. Obviously, they have shorts now as well, and it spreads to all the other platforms as well. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the way that consumers want to have information presented to them, right? It has changed a lot, even if we just look at social media, not all the old school uh, media that is, well, out of fashion by now, right? But even if we look at like the Facebooks and so forth, it has changed a lot. We actually typically don't fire up social media apps anymore to look at what our friends are doing. That's still part of it, of course, and we're looking for news from them. But most of the time, we also, or almost exclusively, go through reels and we have this news feed no matter what platform is on and we get sucked into that um give me a give me a show of hands like how many of you have well after quite some time realized um that they've been spending minutes sometimes hours on the platform just pretty mindlessly scrolling through the feed right um let, let me know it definitely happens to me i call it professional research uh, <laughs> but in essence it's just really well done uh video content right that sucks me in right uh once a week easy well danny you're very focused um most people uh happen to them um every day uh i forgot the stats i think it's a couple of hours that uh the typical american at least uh spends on, on social media just with reels and uh content so what has actually changed and this is the essence of it here because you have seen that before but what's important for you is that the type of content that users nowadays want to see and are getting used to see is what they call real now i understand UGCs and the way that TikTok is pushing videos is not exactly reality. It's all curated, it's crafted, right? But it is a lot more real than what we have seen before, right? It is the perception of reality. It's a point of view in many ways, okay? So social media is getting real. Let's put it this way. And this is something that you have to work on in your ads as well. So the unfortunate maybe truth is that professional doesn't cut it anymore right i don't know how it is for you i assume that all of you are running ads on facebook instagram and so forth right and many of you probably run their own business or work for a company uh that sells online right that's i assume why you're here right so you're in e-commerce in one way or another right no matter what uh product or service you're selling and i've definitely seen cpms rise i've definitely seen um traffic overall get more expensive right and i've definitely seen that a lot of the professional super heavily edited and like super cool i don't know expensive <laughs> expensively purchased media doesn't really work that well anymore and that is because of the trend and because the social media platforms want you as an advertiser to do stuff that actually has people stay on the platform they want the raw the real the authentic okay so that's a problem, right? 
I mean, for me, it was a problem. I don't know about you, but since you're here in this webinar, I assume that you have been challenged by that. And you see that there's a problem with how ads have been run previously, or maybe how you still add the majority, how you still run the majority of the ads nowadays, right? So the thing is that if that was not enough, it actually gets worse, right? Because nowadays, a lot of people have subconscious ad blockers. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like, I have two kids, uh, soon three, right? And if my two kids, like when they play with well, in the flow, right? Um, they don't hear me. And the same is true for a lot of people when they are on social media. They don't see you. They have subconscious ad blockers. They have this super special moral kind of skill uh, to understand what is an ad and what isn't. And they just sell out your ad. So you get the views, you know, the views of Facebook. They're worth nothing because people don't want to actually see you. They just scroll by you. They've become very, very good at that. So what's the solution? <laughs> you guessed it. The solution is you have to focus on authenticity and you have to focus on believability, right? And I know authenticity is kind of overused as a word, as a term, but it really boils down to that. And we're going to focus on what that actually uh, means, right? And we're also going to focus on believability and how you can put that into your ads. All right. So what does it give you? Lower CPMs, that's for sure. And Dana, Danny has showed some of that data. Uh, with lower CPMs, there comes higher ROAS, and this is what you want, right? You want more profits, so higher return on ad spend. This is kind of obvious, and you probably know that. That's why in this call. But let me also tell you that you will see a lot higher LTV lifetime value. So people will purchase more and for longer, more items, more expensive items. And obviously, you should have a product suite or suite of services that you can upsell. And you will see that people purchase more if you use this kind of content and this kind of ads, right? Because they trust you, right? And also because through these other kind of ads, you actually get to the right kind of customer with the right kind of attention, uh, the right kind of um, uh, the right kind of desire, right? The right kind of um, wants and needs that you can then um, well, solve, right? That you can uh, have a product for. This is exactly what you want. So you don't clickbait people into uh, going to your site, but actually the people who see your product, who see your service and come to you, they already know what they're getting, which also leads to a lot higher um, conversion rates actually on your site. And lastly, a lot more brand lift. So if you're not in branding, if you're like a direct sales guy like, like me, brand lift is kind of a weird concept. It basically means uh, that people actually remember your brand. Let's put it this way, right? And this is awesome. So um, this means that people will actually Google you, right? This means that if you're selling offline, people will go to a shop and remember you and purchase there. So overall, you will see a lot of um, traction that is not coming um, and not visible through like a last click attribution. And this is amazing. Like, this is absolutely amazing. Okay. All right. So let's move forward here. The um, webinar here is all about the holy grail of marketing UGC ads. My name uh, after this little introduction is Philip Sheffman. Uh, I'm the founder of a new company called Reels. I think we're very clever about the name. I don't know if you agree. Um, it's called Reels. We are Reels.com. The website is not really up yet. Uh, this is all in beta mode, and I'm only sharing it with you guys here at Magic. This is very exclusive. Uh, I only service friends, and you'll see who my friends are, and maybe you want to be part of that circle as well. Uh, you might have seen me around. I host uh, two of the largest uh, performance marketing events in the world uh, called Affiliate World and Ad World. So, yeah, I'll cover. Who I am in a in a minute, so um, you can see if you can trust me or not. All right. So what we're going to cover in this webinar are basically three uh, things. All good things come in threes, right? So three is the magic number here. We didn't come, we're going to cover what a UGC actually is, how it looks like, and what you want to produce. We're going to focus on how you actually do that because you don't just want to see that. You want to have it for yourself. Trust me, you want to have UGC for yourself, and I'm going to show you how you do that. Um, and the third part is an offer. I want to show you what we have been putting together. And if you want to benefit that from that, uh, I have something very special for you towards the end. But first, I want to show you how it's actually done. So if you don't want our help, you can do it yourself, right? Okay. So um, very briefly, uh, who am I? Um, they call me Phil. I have a uh, I'm from Austria, right? I have a German last name, not too easy to pronounce. So uh, you can just stick with Phil here. And um, yeah, 
that's me. I'm like the crazy nut on stage when you go to affiliate world. By the way, we have our next event in Barcelona next week, Wednesday and Thursday. So if you happen to be in Barcelona or want to catch a last minute flight, uh, not to see me, but to, to actually be part of uh, what I really think, and I'm biased, uh, is the coolest performance marketing event in the world. Uh, we're going to have like five, 6,000 people on stage, some really big shooting stars um, in the world of advertising and beyond. So if you want to go there, uh, let me know and definitely uh, meet me for a party or two. Uh, it's really a lot of fun. So we have like five, 6,000 people there. Overall, uh, we have, I think, close to 200,000 people per year uh, at our events. Um, big part of that virtual, but we have about 20,000 per year uh, at physical events. So that was Bangkok, I believe, last December. We had Dubai in February, March, and now we have Barcelona. And then uh, we take another round. Okay. Okay. Um, what you will not know about me is that I'm actually a family person. <laughs> so this is my high school sweetheart. I've uh, been together with her uh, for almost 30 years. It's uh, crazy. I'm uh, very much in love and very happy here. Those are our two boys, Eve and Joel. And we have a third one on the way. It's going to be crazy. Um, all right. And we love to travel. So that's cool. So, um, oh, yeah. Uh, I love a party. Uh, that's a champagne shower. I don't know. Um, can't recommend it. Um, stinks like crazy. Uh, anyways, carpe diem, right? I like, I like to... Uh, live life to the max. So I don't know if you're interested in that. Uh, maybe this is more important. So um, over the last 20 years, I'm 40 now, I have really focused on pretty much one thing, and that is having information that other people do not have. So how do you get information that others don't have? You hang out with the right kind of people who have that information, right? Uh, so I've been very fortunate to hang out with people like Gary B, Neil Patel, Ryan Dice, uh, a lot of people that are obviously not on that little screen here. But that gives me access to stuff uh, that most people don't have, right? And uh, I want to share part of that uh, with you. So let's uh, dive into it. Because one thing that all of these people agree uh, on is that content is king. Content has always been king, right? But it's now more true than ever before, right? 2023, 2024, everything is about content. And actually, we had a um, in-person plus life um, virtual event at the Magic headquarters uh, in Tel Aviv a couple of weeks ago, right? And uh, I got flown in there. It was amazing. First time in Tel Aviv. Uh, amazing headquarters there. Absolutely cool people. If you ever get the chance to go there, please do. And um, we had an event there with like the big guys, like the leadership of Meta, Facebook, Instagram, uh, for Europe and beyond. And content was all they talked about. And yes, for their ads. I'm not talking about like viral stuff and so forth. I'm talking about ads, right? Um, so content is king and Meta is definitely focusing on that train and all the other platforms are as well. So I promise you we're going to speak about the what, right? So, well, let's do that. But first, let me know what you sell because I want to make sure I give you the right kind of examples and we focus on the right kind of examples because next up, I'm going to show you a couple UGCs that are performing very well. So we understand what we're actually talking about and what we want to do. Okay, so uh, let's see. Um, Bruno sells chump ropes. Cool. All right. Rob sells healthy meals. That's great. Uh, love a healthy meal. Well, should work out more, but uh, the meals is okay. All right. Beard products. You're my man. Hold on. Who are you? Todd. Okay. Send me a link. Um, subscription base. Okay. Cool. Uh, not exactly sure what you mean there. Uh, maybe you can clarify jewelry. Good. Uh, got my bling bling for next week. Uh, food supplements, services, cosmetics. My wife says I need those. But anyways, that's another topic. Um, High ticket business coaching. Yeah, definitely been there too. Cool. Oh, a link. Yeah, sure. Send the links too. Okay, real estate. All right, cool. So we got we got a quite broad portfolio. So let, let me give you a variety of, of, of things here, and then you'll find something that fits for you. Um let's do this here. Let's start with accessories. Uh, I think some of what you do falls into that. We have some services as well. Okay, let's start here. What I'll do here is um, I could show off with my own stuff and like do like the guru kind of thing. I don't like that. I want to show you where you can actually yourself find stuff that works. Okay, let's do this. Let's be as, as, as valuable as possible here. So most of what I'm going to show you is from TikTok and you can actually go to the creative center there, look out, uh, look up like the top apps for different niches. Uh, for different countries and so forth. And you can definitely use that yourself. In case you're lazy or just want to want to know what I like, um, I'm going to show you. So let's see if that works. Looking good. Okay. Yeah. Whoa, what's going on? Okay. So let's first check like, uh, I just want to prove to you that this actually is something that works. So this got like almost 8,000 likes, 200 comments, nothing crazy, right? But definitely something that most ads don't get. So... Let me just uh, can I increase the window here a little bit. Let me just check. 
Uh, yeah. Just making that a bit bigger so you can actually see the ad. Okay. I hope you can hear that. If not, let me know. It's time for another TikTok unbox. Today, I got something a little special. These are the Dusk Sunglasses by Amper. The packaging is really nice, and it comes with this card to test the polarized lenses and extra nose pads for the perfect fit. Here they are, my brand new sunglasses. They're pretty light. They come with the charging cable, and everything feels high quality. Let's get these charged up and see what they can do. There's two buttons on the glasses that control the functions. The right is for music control, which plays out of these speaker ports. The left is... All right, enough of that. Pretty typical unboxing video. That's definitely something that you want to have, right? Um, just want to show you that. All right, what else can a UGC look like? And now, <laughs> hold your breath. I love, I love that one, all right? Uh, definitely not on brand for most uh, companies. Uh, that's why it actually works, little hint. Um, so, too bland, says Rob. Yeah, it works. All right, I'll show you something else. That's definitely not bland, but uh, appreciate your feedback. Okay, let's go with this one. Um, and here we go. This one uh, got quite some nice traction, uh, like over 100,000 likes, uh, over 1,000 comments. Okay, let's see. What do you think about this one here? Let's go. I should have never bought this thing. I lost too much weight. I didn't want these to actually fit. I haven't been able to wear these in over two years. It's too convenient. And I'm having way too much fun. Whatever you do, do not use my code for 10% off. All right. Pretty crazy person. <laughs> that definitely worked. All right. Uh, even got like a promo code in there so they can track it and so forth. Pretty cool. All right. At least I think it's pretty cool. All right. People laughing. All right. Uh, Rob, still too bland? All right. Let's do the next one. Um, beauty, right? What could we do in the beauty? Uh, what I am doing here, by the way, is very different styles, right? So you see that UGC can mean a lot of things. Okay. This is very short. Um, so let's see again i'm going to show you like uh, the traction of that one so yeah thirty-five thousand likes uh, comments shares okay here we go out with the old in with the new goodbye clouds of gray that's it okay once again out with the old in with the new goodbye clouds of gray that's it. All right. So a little product demo right there for beauty. All right. I'll give you two more. Um, oh, nice screenshot, Phil. You farted. Okay. Anyways, um, let's see what this is all about. Check the stats. Whoa, what did I do? Damn it. One sec. Ooh, what do we have here? Like 24,000 likes. Okay. This app called Shut Eye shows you everything you do in your sleep. So I downloaded it out of curiosity and here's my results. I slept for a total of five hours and 25 minutes. It took me one and a half hours to fall asleep. I was in deep sleep for only two hours and 43 minutes, talked twice. All right, okay. So very different style again, that's for apps, right? And then uh, last one, just for variety, I'm gonna show you something uh, that's more like in the uh, household, uh, Era, I guess. Bruno says, I love this webinar. I'm having fun. Well, at least that. I'm glad. <laughs> Always up for a good time, man. Um, okay. So this is, uh, yeah, there's another one. Uh, oh, checking the stats again. Uh, 14,000 likes, uh, the comments, almost a thousand shares. By the way, the shares is the most important. Just telling you. If you ever use a spy tool or check this, the shares is what you want to go after. Okay. Anyways. All right, that's it. So I didn't really prove it to you, but I guess I showed to you that UGC can mean a lot of things. And it definitely can work for every vertical. So we have seen a lot of like physical products here. We did see an app here. It definitely also works for services, right? Uh, so whatever you're selling, having your ads done differently in a UGC kind of way works a lot better. Trust me on that, right? So let's actually see how you do that, okay? All right, so how would you do that? Um, 
I hope you get your glasses on. I'm 40, I'm not seeing that well anymore. But um, the main approach here is that actually you don't want to make ads, right? And I know this is weird. I'm an ads guy, right? Uh, I didn't mention that. I don't like to brag, but we've spent, I think, dozens of millions on, on like meta ads. And a lot of that was like very standard, right? And it worked at the base, right? Uh, that's what you can still do today. But trust me, you also want to add content in the mix. You want to do stuff that actually makes people feel something, right? And this is very different to most ads, right? So really go in on the emotions. There has been so much talk about the last tens of years, right? That you should understand like your avatar and your typical customer and their deepest fears and emotions and their wants and needs. Okay, now finally put that into practice, right? Finally use that, right? So because if you do, you actually get the attention of people, the right kind of people for the right reason. And I mentioned that before, and this is so important and so different from typical standard ads, right? Of course, as just said, focus 100% on the user, right? And something here is, um, pardon my language here, but really fuck your brand, right? Uh, it doesn't matter when it comes to ads. I understand you might disagree with that and we can, can discuss it later, right? But the brand is what you have on your website. The brand is what you display um, on like your pack packaging, right? Uh, the brand is something that you can do in your traditional, more old school, fancy pantsy uh, ads. That's cool, but it's not UGC. And that's a different way of thinking. You have to speak a different language. You have to do a different style. Right. And I'm trying to 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 show you how that is possible. Right. I'm like I'm wearing like a 20 year old fucking shirt that I uh, got on a trip with my wife uh, back in Asia. Right. Uh, this should uh, probably be renewed. Right. I haven't been to the barber. I'm definitely not in a professional studio setup. Does it fucking matter? No, it's actually more real. It's actually more real. You might hear my kids in the background. That's me. That's who I am. Right. And this is how you should do your ads. Well, at least part of your ads. Right. Fuck your brand. It doesn't matter here right? It doesn't matter. You want to do these for different reasons. And then once you have the attention of people, right, you gather their interest, then your brand comes in. There's enough space on your website and everywhere else um, to make things look super, super nice. That's not what it's about here. All right. So be raw and authentic, especially in the beginning of your ads, right? The longer your ad is, the more professional it can be. But in the beginning, and we're going to speak about hooks, super important to be raw, right? Good. Then obviously focus on broad relatable problems. Uh, that's very important. A lot of people, uh, especially uh, on, on Meta, uh, for years have been talking about go niche, right? Be very specific and small audience and all of that, right? Nowadays, seriously, just fire up magics, right? Does all the magic when it comes to targeting and everything, right? And focus on the creative, right? The creative still needs your attention. The rest is done by AI, right? Don't worry about it. Make your ads as broad as possible, right? Of course, speak to a specific set of your audience, but then have a quite big problem that you solve. This way, it's a lot more scalable. A lot more people can understand what you're talking about. It gets shared a lot more, this kind of thinking, okay? All right, so, um, and then of course, identify what matters to your audience, right? So you always wanna speak to their values, how they're thinking. So go kind of deep, right? And go into the problems and just show yourself being vulnerable as well, especially if you have a person that shows stuff, right? And we've seen some of those examples and we're gonna see a couple more, all right? Good, and this is really what needs to be a hook. So who knows what a hook is? Right? Come on. Yeah, I'm forcing you to engage with me. What's a hook? What's a hook? What's a hook? Put it in the chat. All right. So a hook uh, is catching the attention. Exactly. The catch. Yeah. Okay. So the hook is the first three seconds, right? Or first couple of seconds off whatever you put online. In this case, your ad, right? What is the job of hook? It is to have that thumb stopping uh, effect, right? So you typically, uh, people scroll through the feed, right? And you want them to stop, right? And watch your shit for a couple of seconds. The hook is the most important part of your ad, right? This is why we typically create three to five to sometimes even 10 different hooks for each and every concept that we use as an ad. Because if the hook doesn't work, if it doesn't stop people, the rest of your ad and everything that you're trying to do 
is irrelevant, right? So the hook, super, super important. And typically the hook is about like a deep desire, a need, something extraordinary, something that surprises people, right? That's the hook. Then you have a value part. And as we've seen in the examples, that can be very, very different, right? Depending on what you're selling, right? And then I'm just looking at the chat. Todd says value, what uh, will benefit the customer? Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, by the way, it's all about perceived value, not actual value. So perceived value is what somebody uh, believes is important, right? And that's when it, what you want to tap into and maximize. Okay, and then uh, a lot of ads, uh, of course, have call to actions. Um, actually, calls to action go more and more away, I feel, right? Um, but it really depends on what you're selling and how you want to do it. In general, that's the third part, again rule of threes, right? A hook, then you want to provide value, and then you have a call to action. All right, let's keep going. Um, so when it comes to recording, right, um, this is something that a lot of people are a bit scared of, and I understand why, right? But in essence, it's very easy. You just have to think not like a marketer, but like a creator, or really like just a normal human. And I know as a marketer, we're not acting like a typical human, right? We're, we're very weird, right? Like a sales guy. Have you ever been like speaking to somebody who wants to sell you a car? They're not human. They're weird, right? Stop that. Just be, be like a human, okay? Um, uh, Tori asks, a soft CTA is better for UGC. You know what? Let's go through the questions in the Q&A session then, but keep them coming, put them there. And I hope Danny is going to help me to um, catch a couple of the, the, the questions so we can go through them. Okay, so I'm going to go through that quite quickly because I think we want to stick to an hour. Is that right, Danny? Like overall, including the Q&A? Okay, good. So let me uh, move a bit quicker and then uh, we can talk about stuff in the Q&A as well. So in essence, you want to remove all components of your video ad that subconsciously impact how somebody perceives that content you want them to believe it is a viral tiktok you do not want to give the impression of this being an ad this is real if you just take one thing away from this whole webinar this is it right people want to see organic real content so please give them ads that appear that way don't hide anything right just make it more natural so this comes down to a lot of things. First of all, the talents, like who do you get as an actor, right? Because typically what you want to do, by the way, is you can use real uh, testimonials. You can use real people. That's cool. It's a bit hard to scale, right? So in general, what you want to do is you want to get talents. You want to recruit people um, and get their feedback. Um, by the way, they're not acting, right? <laughs> they should actually have real comments about your product too. If it's a cool product, they can just talk about it. And they can actually also say negative things about them. That's cool. That's believable. Not everything is perfect. I love my iPhone. It's not perfect, right? It's too big for my fucking pocket, right? It scratches. I don't like that. It's still the best phone for me, right? So it's okay. Um, get talents. Get the right talents. Um, you want to get a lot of different types of talents, right, to uh, attract different kinds of people, right? Uh, if somebody looks uh, very beautiful, might attract some kind of buyers. If somebody's, well, um, more... Uh, looking different, right? Um, not conventionally attractive, attracts other people, right? Then you want to look at the lighting. Like, uh, I don't really use a good light here, right? Um, you could use a ring light. You could use like natural light, different things. It all influences how it is perceived. You definitely do not want to have like a professional studio, right? Look at how TikTokers do it, okay? Usually not in a professional studio. Usually it doesn't work, right? Um, camera quality. Usually your phone is just perfect. Depends on the phone, but usually just perfect. You don't want to use anything else, right? I know there's people that use professional equipment to try to, but try to make it look like a phone camera. <laughs> you can do that. It's kind of weird. Uh, just use your phone. Um, then regarding script and story, some people like script UGCs, doable, not recommended, right? Obviously, you want to tell uh, your talents what they should talk about, like somehow guide them. That's true. Uh, but they usually know what they're doing if it's the right kind of talent. Uh, and then also you want them to speak their language, right? Just give them a couple of points to talk about it, right? Uh, obviously nothing robotic, please. Nothing like that's that's weird, right? Natural is the thing. Um, and then of course the setting, right? So whatever you're selling, uh, try a lot of different uh, settings, right? Um, usually the process is find something that works and then produce more of that, but in different settings with different people, right? A little bit different language. And then you just leverage on that, like with any other ad, really, right? Just that UGCs give you so much more variety, right? It's so much cooler. Okay. And then, of course, be uh, relatable, right? And uh, a little bit inspirational as well. Okay. Then for editing, 
Uh, that's uh, one of the last uh, biggest points here. And then I want to give you a couple more examples, right, uh, of different types. So the editing is another thing that scares people away. There's obviously no shortage of uh, cheap editing uh, uh, services around the world and, and, and people who uh, make a living uh, offering that. The problem is that most people don't really understand what they're doing. Um, so if you get somebody like that, you've got to guide them. Same for your internal team if you have one, right? Um, again, make it as if a TikToker. Uh, has made it, right? TikTok is your best reference here, right? Uh, also, if you run it on, on meta platforms, of course, right? Especially then. Stuff tends to work very well when it comes from TikTok and you put it on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Not always, but tends to, right? So uh, look into like tax overlays and how they're uh, usually done. They should look very native, right? Like typically you would just use it on your app. The pacing, like how fast people speak, I tend to speak a little bit faster, it tends to work very well on UGCs as well. It doesn't have to be. Uh, the caption style, right? The colors, um, then obviously a lot of the those UGCs have very harsh cuts. Um, when you speak with like a professional, like a professional video person, they 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 feel it hurts them, right? But it works. Chomp cuts, zooms in and out, stuff like this, right? I have seen very successful UGCs where the phone drops, right? Uh, I don't know, the dog barks, right? A person just, I don't know, touched like the voice control and sound weird. We're human, right? Uh, okay. Uh, so let's call it audio and sound effects, right? Um, and then sometimes music is great as well, right? Just make sure that you actually have the rights to that, okay? Important, this shit changes all the time, right? Very fast, actually. So we see a lot of changes, like even within a couple of months. So uh, watch the space, right? Okay, so let's uh, look at a couple more uh, examples and then we're done with part two. And I'll show you the options that you have uh, for moving forward. So want to see a couple more examples? Yes? Let me know. Put it in the chat. Okay. I'll keep going. Here's another unboxing one. Pretty, pretty standard, but very well done. Uh, let's go. Okay. Yeah, pretty standard. Uh, works very well. Oh, we didn't check the stats. Let me do that again. Uh, yeah, so like a thousand shares, almost 40,000 likes. Decent. All right. So unboxing you can really use for any physical product that you have, right? Let's uh, make that easy. If you have a physical product, use unboxing, right? Um, before or afters, let me give you an example of that as well. Um, if that works for your product, uh, that's really cool as well. Uh, I have, uh, when I find it, I have an example here. Ooh. Where is it? Okay, let's do that again. Mm. So let's see here. Oh yeah, that's that's all worse actually. Okay. Um, Yeah, I didn't do that well, actually. Shouldn't have chosen that example. Uh, I do find it interesting because they just used photos before, right? Like old photos. Uh, and then they did like a couple of videos uh, to show the status quo. That's one way you can do before and after. Then obviously you've seen a lot of product reviews. And these are like the four main categories I wanted to show you, right? Um, the four types. Obviously, there's a lot more, uh, especially when you go more creative. But these are the four you definitely want to have uh, for your brand and test how they, how they work for you. So product review is another standard one. Uh, this one I find very interesting. I wanted to show you that. Uh, first of all, uh, I think it has had pretty good traction. Yeah, that has like, wow, 24,000 shares. I mean, that's like a fucking jackpot, right? Uh, I want to show you something because it's a bit different than what you usually see. Uh, it has a strong hook. Again, very important. I'm sure they tested hooks on that one. Um, this is not one of mine. Uh, so I'm sure they tested hooks on that one. And um, the rest is a long story. It's a weird format. It's a couple of minutes. I'm just going to show you the beginning. Mainstream medicine does not want you to get better. I'm going to share with you uh, how I got rid of my migraine and headache symptoms. And you're not going to believe it. A couple of years ago, I had debilitating migraine and headache symptoms every single day. Pilates, cranial nerves, and this thing was life-changing. All right. So it's just a guy walking around telling his life story. Um, pretty amazing. Uh, the reason why it worked was because uh, a lot of people shared it, right? Uh, otherwise, people might consider it boring as well. But it's just a caption, uh, like 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 something that caps captures your attention, right? Because it's a cool story. All right. 
And then uh, let me show you a couple more product tutorials. This is what you probably think are UGCs. You see a lot of these like, um, like makeup. You see that a lot. People just uh, showing what kind of products they use. Um, what do we have here? That's another one from Instagram. Hello. Uh, this is um, yeah, just another one. Um, Instagram. Personality. In the morning, I like to dampen my face. If you have oily skin, you do a gentle cleanse here. And because I live in New York, the tap water is fantastic. But pending your water. Right. Just showing what you use. Uh, and the last example I give to you is this here. Um, so what do you what do you do here is typically you show people like the five tips to do that and that, or like a process that you go through, like a tutorial, something like that. You showcase products, and the showcasing of the product uh, is very well visible on this one here. If it starts, uh, so it's just a mom showing what she feeds her toddlers and veggies into your kids. Tip number one: add rice, cauliflower, or shredded zucchini to anything. Oatmeal, tacos. They can't even taste it. Tip two is to add fruit and veggie pouches like Buns Upon a Farm. All right, that was product. Okay, so uh, this is how it works. Good. So if you're considering uh, UGCs, uh, we walked through a couple of the what's, right? And then how you actually do it. Uh, and these are the types uh, you want to probably start with. If you don't run any like these yet, <laughs> please, please start. Okay, because this is really how performance works for 2023. Again, it's not about running only UGCs, but you have to put them in the mix. And usually, they perform better um, than anything else. Okay. All right. So um, put in the chat which styles you've tested yourself, which ones you like best, which ones you like to test. Uh, put that here, right? Uh, I want to see uh, how deep you're into this already. Okay. And then um, let's move to the last part here, right? Because I really feel that you must level up. Obviously, I don't know where exactly you are in your journey, right? I don't know uh, how much you've done with UGCs yet, and I'd love to uh, do that in the last couple of minutes. Uh, so you tell me a little bit about your experiences. When it comes to us, and again, we have spent many, many millions, dozens of millions on the big social platforms, and UGCs are <laughs> it's just a killer, right? This is what you want to use, and uh, you will see that in Magix if you use it uh, as well, right? Uh, so you have to level up, right? And you really only have three options, right? The first one is you give up. And um, I, I mean that with all with all like honesty, right? If you're not moving in that space and become more real about your ads, then competition is probably just going to kill you. Um, if not this year, then very soon. So since you're here, uh, probably you don't want to give up. So uh, the other one is just a DIY option. Do it yourself. Um, do it, right? I mean, use what we covered here. I know that was just a snapshot uh, of what's necessary. And you're going to dive into that a lot deeper. Uh, but just do it. Just move forward. Um, it's quite a lot of work to get started, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but it's no rocket science. You can do it. You can test it. You can see what works for you. If and just uh, if uh, you want our help, uh, then what we have put together is something that we call an expert partnership. And I just want to spend like two, three minutes to explain to you what that is in case you're interested, right? Um, so um, I've never offered that. Uh, again, I only work with friends typically, right? And I work a lot with friends. We just uh, started like a yacht company. We do a lot of investments, a lot of different stuff. Uh, I usually don't work with people who I've not met before, but we've started this partnership with Magix. So this, this is what I can do for you. Um, you just send us a product and I send you the UGCs. That's the offer. So you can basically forget about everything I just said if you want to, right? Uh, you just send me your products. Um, I'm in Austria, right? Uh, European Union, uh, quite easy to ship to, right? And we handle all the rest and we just send you the UGCs. You have to run them, of course, right? And make money, but uh, that's your part. You don't have to worry about anything else, right? So this is really like the zero time and effort solution that simply works. Right. Um, if you want that, if you don't want to have all the hassle and everything, this is what you get. Right. Basically, a full service done for you, creative production. We do the talent scouting, the contracting, we do all the briefs, the communication, we do the recording, the curation, the editing, everything. And you just get the final thing um, and roll with it. Right. And you have the confidence that your ads uh, will work. Right. So I think you'll love it. You get custom content, you get stuff that's performance driven, hassle free. Um, and also you get those uh, with consistency because that's so important nowadays, right? Um, you just get the UGCs every single month. Uh, and actually it's very cost-effective, probably a lot cheaper than anything else uh, that you've done in terms of like professional ads, right? Um, there's a cost to it, yes. Um, other services uh, that deliver quality cost between like five and $10,000 a month. I don't know if you consider that uh, expensive or not. Uh, they work because they deliver, right? And usually it's like 10 to 20 UGCs, um, but it's also a lot of headaches, right? I've worked with them before. Um, 
yeah, it's not always easy because you still have to do a lot of stuff. We're different here. We really are partners, right? And so we actually offer like 100% money back guarantee. If you don't like the stuff, if it doesn't work for you, uh, we'll give you the money back. That's very strange for a service-based company because obviously we have costs. So we really, we're really at a loss if our shit doesn't work, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, we sell it for four thousand dollars a month. You get ten UGCs every month, uh, done by experts. Zero risk, zero hassle, including the guarantee. Uh, but obviously, um, want to do something special here for you guys. Just not four thousand dollars. You get a bonus, which is a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with me. Don't do that usually. Uh, working with me usually comes at at least uh, ten to twenty thousand dollars a month on a retainer. Uh, yes, it's crazy. Never thought it's possible, but that's what it is. Um, and we have a special for you, which is basically um, seven percent of ad spend, right? Um, why do we do that? Because it aligns our interests, right? There is a minimum, right? So if you're only spending like one or $2,000 a month, it doesn't make sense to you. Let's be honest about that, right? If you're spending above $10,000 a month, then I think this is very, very interesting for you. Um, it comes at a like $2,000 minimum. So that's like $65 a day, if you want to put it this way, uh, or 7% of ad spend. Um, and again, my business fully depends on <laughs> making you win, right? You have the money back guarantee, 100%. Um, and we only really make money uh, when you scale the ads. If the ads work for you, you scale them, you make more money. This is when we were the $2,000 a month. I don't really earn anything like my cost internally is about the same, right? So we really want those ads to work for you. This is how we make money as well. This is my last slide. If you want to have that uh, for 25 hours, please. Um, this is very, very, um, yeah urgent <laughs> for you because I only want action takers, right? It's not like I couldn't have the offer open in three days either, but <laughs> um, I want people who are ready, right? If you're ready, book a call. This is the link. Um, maybe I can put that in the chat afterwards as well, right? Uh, book a call here. We don't have to get started within 24 hours, but book your call. Uh, let's see if you're a fit. Um, if you qualify for what we're doing here, um, we're going to have an open conversation. We're going to see if that makes sense for you. And if it does, we're going to rock it. All right, so what do you get? 10 performance UGCs every month, zero effort, worries, time, 100% money back guarantee, working with me directly if you want to do that. Um, that's the deal and complete goal alignment. So yeah, that's me. And uh, this is the link. So well, rock UGCs. Thanks for having me. And I really hope that you kill it, right? No matter if we work together or if you do it yourself, just make sure that you use UGCs and really rock it this year. Okay, all right. Thanks. Danny, over to you. Amazing. Thank you so much. I think that was super interesting. I learned a ton. I can see from the chat, everyone has been posting, uh, sending messages, uh, questions to the hosted panelists. Um, so it's fantastic. So we already have a whole uh, lineup of questions, uh, which is really, really good. Um, so yeah, super, super, thank you, super inf insightful. Before we get started with the q and I'll just say, yes, this is recorded. Yes, it will be uploaded to the Magics Academy. We will share this. Uh, if you sign up to the webinar, we will share the link with you as well. So you will get it. So don't worry, because I saw quite a few people asking about that. Um, now, I know there's a few questions that came in while we were talking. So let's start the Q&A. We'll quickly jump into it. Uh, Nico, Mana, are you able to see what came through and uh, kind of like lead us through the, through the way? Yes, yeah, so I actually managed to compile all the questions from the chat. So I'm going to share them with Nico just for efficiency. But the first one we have here is, are soft call to actions better for UGC ads? Uh, usually, yes. Uh, it depends on your offer. If you have something really outstanding um, and this is like a special deal um, and you run that for like a uh, special uh, holiday or whatever, you can be more aggressive. That's cool. Uh, people are fine with that. Um, but in general, yes, soft is, is cool. Um, it's more important that you focus on shareability than a, a super aggressive call to action, because the more people share your stuff, the more people will naturally be, um, well, exposed to it and then also click. Okay. hundred percent. Brilliant. Um, Saida also had a question here asking us, what do you have to say about people telling us that marketing is moving away from ads to email or something else? Mm. ads are not going anywhere. But the, the social platforms are powered by ads. That's how they make their money. So they will do everything they can to get your advertising dollar, right? But they're a hybrid platform, right? They serve two masters, which is always a problem, right? Uh, they have to make sure that people actually spend the maximum amount of time on the platform. So this is why they have to make sure that the content that is delivered there is actually awesome, right? And 
keeps people on the platform. And as we see in general, they're making a great job in this regard. And there's a whole philosophical question about this, but that's not where we're going to go. Ads are going to stay and social is definitely uh, what you should focus on. I'm not saying email is unimportant, right? Especially if you work in e-commerce, you should probably aim at about 50% of your revenue coming from email. But the question is, where are the emails coming from? And more often than not, that is powered by social, right? So no, ads are absolutely going nowhere. Uh, but yes, uh, it's not the only thing that you should have in your marketing mix. Yeah, oh, I'll just add to that. Sorry, last point here. Um, the whole move from traditional ads to UGC shows that this is an important factor, right? So we are moving away from the old boring professional ads into a new era. We already have, right? But still, you will have to pay for traction uh, and they do want your money more than ever. That's it. Yeah, and I'll just add real quick, as, as Phil said, the number one traffic source will always be the social, right? That's where the line of acquisition will come in. Email, you will maximize the LTV from the customer. You will bring revenue to, down the road. But to acquire the customer, the number one traffic source will stay in the social. It's not going anywhere. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much for that. Um, we have another question here, and I'm going to try and phrase it in a way that makes sense. So we have, um, what... What UGC ad could we use for a physical mattress store, um, which I believe works by appointment? What would that look like um, in terms of your recommendation or suggestions? Oh, there's a lot of ways that you can do that. I mean, um, obviously, before and after would work great here. Like people who test your mattress, right? Uh, I've had back pain for many years, right? Um, so uh, I'll give you a hook. So, so I had back pain for eight years. Look at how I solved it. Right. That would be one of like the potential hooks. Right. And then you just show a person on that mattress. Right. Um, and that person giving like a POV uh, point of view kind of statement about how everything changed. Right. And then actually it's great because you don't have to have a hard sales pitch. What people should do is just reach out with a private message. Right. Right. Just um, send a DM. Right. And we'll see if we can help you. Yeah. And there's so many variations to this before and after. Like, like the, and that's hook. I found it, you got a full night's sleep. Here's why. Bam. And that brings you back, right? All these different hooks of like, this is how I got it. So I think there's so much ways to do that, um, as Philip said, yeah. Great. Uh, we've got another question here asking, is UGCs better for top of funnel or middle of funnel? Oh, really? Everywhere. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of like UGCs. There's so many different ones, right? And I try to... Um, give a little bit of a uh, like structure here as well in different types, right? Um, but it definitely works very, very well top of funnel, right? Uh, because it gets the attention of people, right? Um, and then they you can hook them in really, right? It also works very well um, further down the funnel. Uh, this is where typically you would use more testimonials, right? So one great way of using UGCs is just have somebody review your product, right? And uh, tell them how it stands out. And this could work very well also further down the funnel, right? Uh, just imagine somebody uh, watched that mattress video, right? Uh, about somebody just uh, telling a story about the mattress. And then this person gets retargeted by five or 10 other people telling different stories about the same mattress, right? I mean, come on, can you still purchase another mattress? It's very hard. <laughs> Yeah, and I think, I think just the top of the funnel, there's so much competition on catching that person, right? So then I think like the quality UGC can make all the difference in the brand because as Phil said, in retargeting, you can come again, you know, the audience knows your brand, the middle, they know all this kind of stuff, but for top of funnel, it's so powerful to get that hook to make sure they actually um, give a second thought to your ads, right? Because people are scrolling all the time. To make people stop and look at your ad compared to other ones, that's the difficult part and that's what UGC can do really well for top of funnel. Great, brilliant. So we have a lot of questions. We're still just going through the ones in the chat before we actually go to the Q&A itself. Um, there's another question here from Bruno, and he's asking, how many times should we use the same hook on different ads when it comes to UGC ads? Okay, so in general, this is not just for UGCs. This is for every kind of ad that you run, but it's especially important for UGCs and you have to factor it in when you're uh, producing, right? That's the important part here, right? Um, so you 
use as many hooks as possible, right? To find something that sticks. So I think I mentioned that, but in general, you want to use at least three to five hooks per concept, right? So you first work out the concept. So let's use the mattress example. That's your concept overall. And then you want to have the actor produce three to five hooks and you see what works best, right? Obviously you have to use a little bit of budget to see what uh, gets your best traction, but that's quite cheap, right? Because you're just looking at like uh, first level indicators um, and KPIs, like what's going to work. And then you stick with what works and you produce more of what works. So yes, you reuse that hook over and over again, but typically um, you want the same actor to do it a little bit differently, but you also roll it out with other actors, right? So you get three, five other actors that look different, that speak different, right? Um, and use them with the same hook, the same concept and roll that out as well, right? The best thing that can happen to you is that you have 10 videos that use the same um, hook, but by different people or a little bit different editing, stuff like that. That's, I mean, seriously, this can make all the change in your company, all the change. I have, <laughs> let me see, let me see that. I had, a, I had a client once when I was still doing agency work, right? Um, and um, we found one ad like this, right? Um, and I think it was for a time, it was like the only ad that they were running, right? Uh, spent about 300K a month, right? With basically one ad, but different variations, same hook, okay? Great. So Todd is asking us, um, he, he's saying he's in a market that's extremely saturated um, and he's in beard products. So what can he do really to stand out like Philip is standing out right now? Yeah. Um, how can you stand out with beard products? Um, again, uh, well, okay, let me, let me start that differently. I mean, this is not about you to see, but as a marketer or a company owner, you better know your differentiators, right? You have to have a high perceived value that is based on your differentiating factors. Um, so understand what's a differentiating factor. I, I'll just come up with something now so I can give you concrete examples. So uh, let's say it's um, not only like a vegan, uh, skin-friendly kind of pro product that you have, uh, but also it is produced by... I don't know, um, by disadvantaged mothers uh, in a, a low income country, right? Just, I'll give you a random example, right? Um, so you go all in on that and you will find an audience online uh, that feels like um, they can be on a social mission, right? By purchasing uh, those products, right? And again, this is just a random example, right? But this could be like a differentiating factor. So then of course, you wanna have UGCs that, that fit here, right? So they tell the story of that differentiating factor, right? So you get people who are aligned on the values and the principles of why you produce that, because obviously there's a lot of good products out there, right? But I would fucking purchase that. I would pay double. Send me a link, but only if that is your differentiating factor, okay? All right. I think we have time for about two, three more questions. So uh, I'll let you guys do it because we wanna take too much of Phil's time as it has been. Um, in addition to that, I'll just say before uh, that, that use the link that Phil sent you. It's a very, very val valuable link to get on a call um, with Philip. So you take advantage of him sending you this link and actually book a call. So I'll just say that and let you guys go back to the Q&A. Okay, so here's another question of the hundreds you still have have but how long should a UGC actually be how long would you recommend a good UGC should be yeah um they're like most uh, short videos uh, anything from 10 seconds to a minute is 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 good right uh most are in like the 20 30 second range yeah and I, I can just say the data supports that as well right if we look at magic data we can see um, those are the areas that the UGC performs best. We know it's, and, and that's what I think what keeps it authentic, right? I think that's what uh, people like and people are used to. Brilliant. Uh, okay, a last question just um, from us is asking, what advice can you give to a brand with mobile apps trying to get started with UGCs um, on TikTok? Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not sure 
uh, what kind of app it is, right? But I did show an example. So uh, that's, that was pretty standard, what I showed. So uh, th this worked for organic as well, by the way, but um, I assume you're interested in ads and definitely you want to push things out uh, with ads, um, especially if you see them working uh, on organic, right? Um, so uh, no matter if TikTok ads or, or if that's meta, um, I would typically have a user that uh, goes through using the app right and screen shares now what you've seen is is a screen share what is actually working even better is like a green screen right um so uh and, and in very bad quality actually it's weird but that's important right uh so people using like the front-facing camera um the talent uses front-facing camera uh speaks about obviously has a strong hook right and then just walks through the benefits of using the app um and they're they're using a, a green screen and then you just see like what they're doing uh behind them I hope you have seen that before. It's just a weird format. Works very, very well right now. This is what I would start with. Uh, I like that. And I'll just say, I saw something genius a while back and I was thinking, if you want to make a, a UGC go viral with low budget, this is the easiest way to do it. You do one of those videos where you walk in the street and you say like, for example, uh, have a chance to win $100 if you, can, if you can stay two minutes in this game. You know, and then you have all those videos of people walking around winning money. You know, for like two, three hundred dollars, you can create probably three, four different variations of this UGC that will actually go viral and get you tons of shares, tons of likes, tons of comments. So, when you just think about throwing three hundred dollars away, it's stupid. But when you think about it from a marketing point of view, for only two, three hundred dollars, you get such a powerful UGC to use that will get so many views. So that's just something as well to uh, think about specifically for apps. You know, app gaming, all those different areas. Absolutely, yeah. I think this is, um, I have one really, I think, uh, brilliant question, if I might add. It, it does bring about the question of, you know, we don't know what we don't know. So is there any type of recommended specific strategy on testing UGCs against one another? So a type of A-B testing for UGC ads? Yeah, obviously it depends on what platform you're on and there's uh, some specifics to that, but uh, in general, I obviously will go with a platform like Magix, right? That uh, facilitates the process a lot, right? Um, when it comes to the actual creatives, uh, what we do is um, we um, focus on rolling out the number of concepts, right? So for example, um, in case you would go with our UGC package, what you would typically get are two different concepts uh, per month, right? If you're doing larger volume, we can deliver more. We can find a way uh, that satisfy all the needs. But in general, uh, we would deliver two concepts that come with um, five different hooks, right? Um, so you got to test the hooks first, right? find early indicators of what works there, which is also great in, in, in terms of cost efficiency, right? Because you can use early indicators, right? Uh, and then you focus on the one hook with that main concept uh, and spend some more on that, right? This way it's very, very efficient and effective and you can test the different concepts against each other. Next month, you take the new concept. And so you're, you're constantly testing new stuff and find stuff that works. Obviously, every once in a while you hit gold, right? And this is what you scale then. If you do that first month, maybe you get lucky and it's awesome. That's amazing. In general, you would do that for a couple of months. After two, three, four, five months, you should have stuff that easily outperforms what you have run before, right? Um, which is obviously when like everything that you have invested into that uh, makes a lot more sense. Uh, usually it takes two, three months, like everything, right? Um, you need that time to test, uh, for example, with the process I've, I've just shared, right? Yeah, and if you actually want to see a bit more technical perspective of how to actually set up a creative testing campaign and what audiences and all that kind of stuff. So we actually did a webinar about this in the past. It's in the academy as well uh, about creative testing. So we called it creative testing, but you take the same elements for UGC testing. It's kind of like the same ideas and you implement them um, as well. So I think that could be um, that now. Unfortunately, we're really over time because this has been super, super interesting. And every question that goes by, we learn more and more. Um, but I think we have to cut it here. Um, first of all, thank you for, for taking the time. It's been absolutely amazing. I think everyone here had a great time and uh, enjoyed it so much. Um, guys, if you have more questions and you didn't get answers, uh, make sure to pop uh, an email. We'll kind of like send something out. We'll make sure I'm, I'm sending my email in the chat as well. So you can reach out to me directly if you have any questions and have not got, got an answer. Uh, and you can feel free to reach out. 
Um, this recording will be uploaded in a few days into the Academy of Magics, um, so don't worry, and you'll be able to watch it over and over uh, and take all the golden insights from Phil's um, uh, webinar. Thank you so much, and uh, we speak soon. Amazing, guys. Thank you very much, guys. That was a great pleasure. Hope it was valuable. Thank you, guys.